He sat down in the chair right across from me. He said, no one could ever understand, no one could ever describe with words or pictures what I am going through unless they have experienced it for themselves. He had lost his wife about six months before this conversation. So when I asked him to stop by so we could talk about this and also talk about God's comfort that he provides, that was the first thing that he said. No one can understand. And if you haven't lost someone close to you, I'm, I'm happy for you. But for most of us, we have. And it's hard to define. Grief is not like a shape with lines and definitions. It's not like an equation with numbers and you can add it up and, and see something definite. It's not something you can even really describe with a thousand pictures. It's so random and confusing and complicated. So what do you do with grief? That's a really good question to consider, especially if you're the person who is the best contact person for someone who is grieving. For starters, there's a long list, a long, long list. You can just go looking and you'll find plenty of them, of all the do's and don'ts, and I won't exhaust or even go through several of them here. Although they're worth looking through because you don't want to be the person who says the wrong thing or does the wrong thing, it's maybe important just to consider this one thing first. If it was your mother, father, <clears throat> who's going through grieving, if, if you're the best person to contact that friend, that loved one who is almost sick with pain and anguish, maybe first consider this. Don't give up. You be the one to go and encourage them. You can go to them and offer words of prayer. Never ever underestimate the profound power of showing up. And then don't let them push you away. Never give up on them. But more than likely, for the majority of people, this isn't just about telling other people how to encourage those who are grieving, but it's, it's maybe you, quite likely you, who are grieving. Talked to a, re, a, a lady recently who was reaching out to a friend who had lost her husband of 50 years. And the way this lady described it is that her brain feels like jello. You think of one of those big jello mounds on a plate all jiggling around and it's hard to handle. She said her brain is like that. She doesn't really know what to do with most of her day. How confusing. I talked to another man who said that initially, although it's gotten a little bit better, initially his symptoms of grief have been so severe that his body would shut down. He goes to his doctor regularly now to adjust medication to help him. Grief is awful, it's huge, it's daunting. There's that common poem that it's like an ocean and it ebbs and flows and sometimes it's stormy and sometimes it's peaceful and calm, but it's never the same from one day to the next or maybe even from one moment to the next. So where do you start when it comes to grief? More importantly, what good can come from grief? That's what I would like to talk to you about over the next few videos. And so where do we begin? Maybe first begin with where Jesus came into contact with a grieving woman. There was this woman in this town called Nain, and she was a widow. And at that time, if you were a widow, you didn't have a lot of chances of making a good living for yourself. Well, unless you had a son, but then her son died. Look at what happens. Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Now, this is one of those times when you might think, oh, Jesus, he, you did one of those platitude things. You went up to the person who's crying and grieving, and you said one of those things that you just shouldn't say. And you know what often happens when you say don't cry to people who are crying? At least in my experience, it just makes them cry all the more. Like, what, is, what is Jesus saying? Except you can't skip over a couple details. First of all, look at where this woman is. She's with a big crowd of people exactly what those people need in our lives who are grieving. They need us, exactly what you need 
to not isolate yourself or insulate yourself from others. But notice the other detail. His heart went out to her. Literally, Jesus is moved inwardly to, to go to her. And that's what makes his words, don't cry, so meaningful and profound, especially if you are grieving the loss of a loved one. Maybe for you it was a child. I can't fathom what that would be like. I can't even begin to wrap my brain around how hard that grief would be, that loss would be. Maybe it's a spouse or a parent, a grandparent. Maybe if you're like me, your grandparents are gone and that is in and of itself kind of a daunting reminder that one generation goes and then usually comes the next generation. Maybe it was a friend, a neighbor, a coworker. No matter what it was, all grief matters. There's no comparison game. There's no diminishing any of it and it hurts. But Jesus, and you have to know this, Jesus' heart goes out to you too. But he doesn't just say, don't cry. Look at what he does next. Then he went up and touched the coffin they were carrying him on. And the bearers stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Do you know what Jesus does for those who are grieving? His heart goes out to them. But that's not all. He doesn't just say certain platitudes from far away. No, he gets close. In fact, grief, you might even say, is the arena in which God gets closest to us. He gets close to us because he cares. He has a heart that aches when ours aches. And if that's the case for this young man raised back from the dead and his mother, it's the same for you. But what you also have to know is that God gets close because he wants to point our eyes to the only one who can do anything about death and all that we feel in grief. This is the Savior who controls not just blips in time, but eternity in his hands. And with those eternal palms, he draws close to coffins and cares for those who are hurting as you stand there too, as you think about the graveside, as you deal with your loss. So where to begin? To know that not only does God's heart go out to you, but Jesus draws close to you. And one day he will stretch out his hand and raise the ones whom we have lost and raise us too. And in that moment, he will give them all back to us. Did you enjoy this video? Uh, if so, we would love to share even more Jesus with you, even if you have a busy on the go kind of life. Uh, just click here and you can find the audio version for this podcast along with all the other podcasts that Time of Grace offers.